All right, back again, Luke here. And today what I want to do is hopefully be able to help a lot of guys out there who have uh, come across this board here and not exactly known how to wire it up or what this thing is used for. And uh, this is something that I had to do a lot of research on. I had to go through pictures. I had to go through, um, you know, just my own judgment on some of this stuff just to try and figure out where exactly this thing hooks up and where this is from. Now, this board here, if you take a look at it, this is an FCA PCB. And this is made by Namco. And what this board is originally from is it's from a uh, System Super 23 arcade hardware and uh, system. And the hardware itself is pretty well known for some games like uh, 500 GP and Ridge Racer 5 and... I believe there's a few there's a few more games that uh, were used on the system but the most challenging part is to find any kind of information on this PCB itself this FCA PCB the main reason why is because this is usually hooked into an enclosed cage and it's all part of uh, the system 246 and with the system 246 or like I had mentioned the system super 23 um, when this part is included inside the system, it's really hard for, uh, you know, to go online and just type in the serial number or type in any of the numbers on it and get anything. Normally, if you type in, like, System Super 23 or you type in, uh, like, System 246, you'll get pictures of that, but you won't get pictures of this board itself. This board is generally, uh, wired in on the bottom and it's wired, uh, it's bolted in like this and this part here sticks out of the front. This is the JVS board that that controls all of the uh, the main controls here for uh, the different games and this system here is really difficult to figure out how to hook up because of the fact that it's normally wired up inside the uh, the system super 23 so you can't see any of the cables there aren't many pictures of the cables uh, and how it's wired on the inside and I had to go and do some hunting and picking around to see if I could find it and I went through different schematics for um, example for the 500 GP motorcycle game. I went through uh, other game manuals like Biohazard 2. Uh, I went through the manual for Ridge Racer 5. And each one of these uh, FCA boards that I had found had different pinouts and none of them had anything standard. So I was going nuts. I did, however, come across a picture that I was able to find on the System 16 website where I clicked on the FCA board. And luckily, there was just about this much of the uh, the top board here that was uh, shown you know you could see the different wire colors at the top which was a huge plus because without those wire colors it's uh, hard to tell you know what each voltage one or what each pin has uh, as far as voltage goes but one good thing about Namco is they used a certain color pattern for most of their wires. They probably still do with a lot of the hardware, but they use orange, black, and red. Orange means plus 12 volts, black means ground, and red means plus 5 volts. So what I was able to see in the picture was uh, orange, then red, then black, black, then orange, then red. So I started looking through the... Uh, the different pins on my, uh, what was it, my Ridge Racer 2 board, and checking out the different pins on how that was wired up, and uh, as well as checking out the capacitor ratings on here to make sure that that was something that was feasible. And sure enough, you know, I was able to get this thing wired up. Uh, for the power, let's go over here to the power area, and I'll show you. One interesting about uh, interesting thing about Namco, if you think about Namco, Sega, and uh, even just like an ATX power supply, if you go over to Namco, for uh, an example, as I had mentioned before, orange is your plus 12 volts, red is plus 5 volts. If you go over to uh, an ATX power supply, yellow is your plus 12 volts, red is plus 5 volts. So, they're very similar. Now, when you go over to a Sega power supply, you'll find that yellow is your plus 5 volts, red is plus 12 volts, and black is your ground. So, the reason why uh, the Sega part kind of comes into play here is because this JVS board can also be used for the Sega Naomi. And it's an essential part, especially for games like Biohazard, um, the gun, uh, Biohazard, uh, what is it, Gun Survivor, and um, a couple other games that are used for the, uh, the Naomi. So, 
This can be used on the Naomi, and you just have to make sure that you get the power right. Now, if you want to do, if you do want to use this with the Namco board, like the System 246, then you can wire it up like the 246. But trying to use the 246 power supply on uh, this thing when you're using uh, uh, was it a Sega Naomi? It makes things a little bit more complicated. So what I've done here is I've wired this thing up to basically the standard of the Sega uh, because I have a Sega power supply and I use that to run the Sega Naomi and I, if I need to change this around I can. I, I also have wires that are adapted to my 246 so I can use this as well. But if we take a look at the wires down at the bottom here you'll notice uh, there's pins 1 through 6 going from right to left for pin 1, this is plus 12 volts, pin 2 is plus 5 volts, 3 and 4 are ground, pins uh, 5 is plus 12 volts, and pin 6 is plus 5 volts. So you have uh, your 12, 5, ground, ground, 12, 5. And I've marked these here on the ends so I can easily just go through here and I can change uh, around the different parts. I have this yellow one here which has a uh, male adapter on it as well as the red one here which has a male adapter, a different style, and then the ground itself has a female adapter. So they're all quite different uh, when you take a look at them so it's not too difficult to plug in and I don't have to worry about shorting anything out because they're all different here. But if we go down to the front you can also notice that on the front part here there is another spot and this spot here is for, uh, let's see if we can pull this out, this is for the, uh, the USB cord. And for the USB part itself, you can see that there's pins 1 through 5 on the front here. Normally when you get this board, if you get this separate, you're going to notice that there's pins 1 through 5, but in the front here, with a regular USB cable, you'll notice that uh, if you know anything about the USB cable, there's only four pins that are used. So what that means is pin number five is not used. Uh, what I did here is I made a, a cable myself. I just took a, an old cable and kind of filed it down so it would fit inside here and work out. And uh, I traced the pins for this and uh, I checked, like I said, multiple different places to try and find the pins that would work and was able to come across a couple of places that did work. One of the places being um, what was it, the 500GP. Well, I used those schematics and I also used the uh, schematics for Ridge Racer 5 as well as regular USB schematics to try and figure out what these pins were. Now, uh, what you'll find on a lot of the schematics is you'll find the word sense and uh, what that means is it's your uh, plus 5 volts. So the way this works here is number one is plus 5 volts, number two is your D minus which is your data return, um, Number three is your D plus, and number four is your ground. And what you have to do is you have to wire that up to a regular USB cable here. And what I did with this USB cable is I wound up chopping it from an old USB keyboard that I wasn't using so I could uh, just easily wire this thing in here. With uh, normal USB keyboards or uh, cables, they also have a color code. And the way that the color code for the USB works is uh, red is your plus five volts or your sense. Uh, white is your... Uh, D minus, green is your D plus, and black is your ground. So that's all wired in there. And uh, I tried this thing out, plugged it in, plugged in the power, no smoke, no, uh, no problems like that. It just came on with all the different lights on the side here. And I tried it out with my Naomi and uh, it did register the board. It said that it was the FCA board in version 1.1 and uh, it said that the, the board was functioning. Now the more challenging part comes down here when you decide to use this JAE 60 pin connector. This pin connector goes from 1 to 30 on the top and then 1 to 30 on the bottom. So what's uh, really challenging about this one is if you try and use one of the Sega adapters, like the ones that originally fit in like a Sega I.O. If you take a look at uh, this one here, this is a Sega I.O. The Sega I.O. boards, they use a different pin count. So the way that the Sega ones work is like 1 is top, 2 is bottom, 3 is top, 4 is bottom. So the whole top row is going to be your odd number 
numbers. The, bo the bottom row is going to be your even numbers. But this thing just goes 1 to 30, 1 to 30. So uh, you can't follow the numbers on the connector itself unless you have the exact connector that's used for this, uh, which being an Amco connector. And if you're trying to wire up different games, for example, some of the ones that run on the Naomi hardware, you're going to have to try and do some uh, pin hunting. And the schematics that I found so far on some of the different games, such I'm trying to use this for to try and get running, just don't work. Uh, the pinouts are not the same. So you have to be really careful as far as which pins that you uh, you decide to experiment with here. Because some of these pins are live, they're 12 volts, some of the pins are 5 volts. You try and connect one of those two to ground and uh, you're going to be shorting something out on this board. So you really have to make sure that you're careful when you find the different pinouts for everything. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of... Uh, a little bit of a guessing uh, luck and uh yeah, I mean, uh, all around it's a, it's a lot of uh, work to try and figure out exactly which button goes to which pin on here if you're trying to use schematics. But I know that it was driving me nuts trying to figure out what this board was, uh, or how this board was supposed to be connected, where the pinouts were for it, because like I had mentioned, for some of the games, this thing, even it, it changes around the, uh, the order of the... Uh, USB connector here it actually changes around some of them so it would say like plus 5 volts and then it would say ground and then it would say D plus and D minus and yeah and I knew that that was not right you know according to this um, this board here after taking a look at it a couple of times so luckily I didn't go by those schematics and I was able to go by my own judgment here and get it running but uh, there is almost no information on this board on the internet, so I figured I'd make this video to help you guys out, at least for the, the kind of small part of trying to get this thing wired up so you can get some power to it. As far as these pins go here, trying to hook up a steering wheel, trying to find uh, the different uh, pinouts on this thing, exactly, it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge. I've uh, looked at schematics a hundred times, and it keeps saying, like, for example, B24 is the coin-in button, and... Uh, uh, I've, you know, on every single one it says B24, B24, so I've gone over here to, you know, pin number B24, and I've even checked pin A24, you know, like the top pin, and uh, neither of them are working for coin in. I couldn't get coin in on a a either one of them, so something's not uh, working out right with that, but nonetheless, uh, yeah, hopefully this will help you guys out a little bit, and yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching.